Um, thank you so much for coming, and Jorge, I'm just going to ask you a favor. Time me for 10 minutes, because I tend to talk a lot, so so that way Esther and I can have the same amount of time. Um, anyway, my name is Moisa Serrano, and I'm undocumented. I'm an undocumented student living in Yadkin County, North Carolina. So my story really starts as an infant. I migrated to the United States um, when I was very young, and uh, living in the United States has been a blessing, um, and I did everything right. You know, they told me, the society told me to learn the language. Here I am speaking to you now. Um, society told me, dress like us, look like us, um, like the same music. So I grew up, you know, liking Britney Spears and Backstreet Boys. Um, you know, and then uh, I went on to love Power Rangers and, and uh, Pokemon, for any of you who have, you know, kids around my age. Um, so I did, so I, I adapted. Um, and then when I was in school, my teachers told me, make good grades. You know, follow your dreams. You can be anything that you want to be if you work hard. And so I did. But what my teachers didn't tell me was how was I supposed to get to college if I was undocumented. What my teachers failed to mention was the fact that my country would reject me because I lacked an immigration status. What my teachers had failed to mention was the fact that there would be a witch hunt in this country for those of us who have a different color skin and also for those of us who lack a little piece of paper with a social security card number on it. And they also failed to mention that I would, I would face depression and suicide thoughts because at the tender age of 17, when I was dreaming of, of course, you know, fame and fortune like every young person nowadays is, um, that I would be graduating and it would be the saddest moment of my life. Um, and again, I've been opening up about this because there was a dreamer in Texas, his name was Joaquin Luna, who could not go to college, who could not afford it, um, and he decided to take his life. And I know, what that, I know what that feels like, I was there, I know what it's like to feel used by your country, I know what it's like to feel dirty. My own country was telling me, you need to leave. You need to go back. Go back to where you came from. Go back to what? I have been a resident of North Carolina for over 21 years. I'm 23 years old now. I graduated in 2007, and, and in that year, the community college system decided to bar all undocumented students from, from any um, campus of higher learning. So therefore, immediately, I had to go into this underground society. That sounds familiar, right? An underground society of where I would work um, at any type of minimum paying job so I could survive and help my parents. <coughs> Um, I dreamt of going to other states that had in-state tuition, like New York City or California, or um, New York State, California, Texas, just like an under underground railroad. Again, does that sound familiar? Um, but I didn't. I had to stay here. Um, and then, in 2010, um, the DREAM Act was coming up for a vote. And at that time, I was working at a factory third shift from 7 at night to 7 in the morning. Um, working for four days a week, and it was it, it was a great job. I commend anyone who who does that for a living. But again, that was not something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. But at 20 years old, that's the reality that I was facing. But that was all I was going to achieve. And um, May and June, just it was around this time in 2010. I remember seeing my friends graduating from college. Some of them were getting married. Some of them were, you know, um, landing a great job or traveling abroad, or going overseas. And it's a constant reminder to myself and the approximately 53,000 Dream Act eligible youth in our state that we are failures to our society standards because we cannot achieve our dreams and we cannot go to college. It's a constant reminder of how other people are moving on with their lives and they are perfectly happy with leaving me behind and, and they don't even care about my situation or even they won't even take action to help me out. It's a constant reminder of how we're so happy with living in our perfect worlds that we, that we forget about the other people who go to school with us, who might be our neighbors, who are the people that are cleaning your bathroom or cleaning your house, the people who are cleaning your yard, or building the bridges and the roads that you see, or the buildings, as Addie mentioned, that were built here in downtown Greensboro. It's a constant reminder of how we're perfectly happy with modern slavery now. So again, um, right now, I, I formed Encambio in 2010, 
Um, and it's an organization that has expanded um, in rural parts of North Carolina. We were currently the first organization to come out with undocumented students in rural North Carolina, which is Yakin County and Iredell County. Um, we have expanded to other, other um, rural northwestern counties like Davie, again, Iredell, Wilkes, Surrey. We are now in Yadkin, Forsyth, and Guilford. Um, so that's my little personal success story. I came out of it in 2010 as undocumented, um, and I helped you know, create a gun to what it is now. And we, have, um, we are also the first leading immigrant rights organization in the state to champion undocu queer rights rights of undocumented folk who happen to be LGBTQ and undocumented. So we are currently the only organization in our state who are championing um, the intersectionality and the merging of both of these, um, both of these movements. Again, North Carolina is a hit, has a history in education. Guilford County, Greensboro, Forsyth County, and Winston-Salem have a deep history in education. Winston-Salem had one of the, or the first um, college for women Again, Greensboro is full of um, historic colleges, A and T, of course. Um, but how come some of our some of our sons and daughters are able to go to college and I am not? Again, I am I right now that the community college system changed its policy, um, and it, they they said that you can go to college, right, as long as you can afford to pay out of state tuition with no financial aid. No government assistance, no public scholarships. I worked hard enough for a scholarship that I got. I wasn't able to use any of it because it was public money. Why? That is not fair. Again, um, I am not able to afford an $800 class because my parents are farm workers, and that's what they were. They are minimum wage earners just like myself. I saved up for a year at that factory that I told you about, um, and I was able to afford two classes but for one semester. And so I had, to, I had to sit down and have a talk with myself and I said, do I want to go to college for one semester and not be able to go back? Or should I save up that money for an emergency? Because of course I'm not, my parents and I are not eligible for health care, we don't have insurance, again, none of these things. Um, so I decided not to go to college and instead um, fight for in-state tuition in North Carolina. And again, um, I'm happy to say that we have introduced HB 904 in the North Carolina legislature. It was the effort of myself and other undocumented students across the state. This is the first undocumented-led piece of legislation that is in our legislature, and that is my success story. It's called HB 904. We have a campaign called Let's Learn NC. We have a website. This is our flyer. Um, I have some talking points for you guys, and if you want more information, um, visit me after, after the forum is over, and I can give you more. Um, the Center for American Progress has estimated that there's, again, around 53,000 undocumented DREAM Act eligible youth in our state. And of course, the DREAM Act really kind of waters it down, so it closes the age gap to kind of like between 16 and 31. So there's more undocumented um, Americans who would benefit in state tuition. But taking the statistics on just 53,000, the Center for American Progress, this is information, this, is, this information is online, has estimated that if we all went to college and got a four-year degree, the economic impact in North Carolina would be an additional $7.8 billion in additional revenue. Why do we not want this money? Who wants to throw, throw away money? I don't see any hands up. Why do we keep bent on having these discriminatory, shameful policies? Why are we still bent on being happy with the status quo and knowing that there are people just like myself out there who are not being able to accomplish their dreams? With knowledge comes responsibility, and you know my story now, but because you lack knowledge about my community or any other social justice issue does not give anyone the right to be irresponsible. So again, $7.8 billion in economic revenue. Um, the Guilford County representatives in the NCGA have been pretty, pretty supportive of HB 904, but they need to listen, they need to hear from you. You guys are here representing other organizations, true, but you guys are private citizens, and you all have a voice, and you all have power. Power is something that the North Carolina General Assembly is scared of, and true power is not electing them into office. True power is holding them accountable when they are not doing the right thing. And that's something all of you can do. Because all of you have a voice, and all of you have a vote. And all of you guys can stand up in solidarity with my community. Um, and this is a very dire situation. Again, like I said, there are children out there. They, I get a phone call, and it's a mother who says, Moises, my son is being deported from Surrey County. Can you help me? And many times I have to say no. 
because I don't have the resources to tackle another deportation, because most of my friends are exhausted of doing the work that we're doing, and also because a lot of them are very further along the deportation process, and there's no hope for them anymore. So again, what are you going to do with an, when another human being, when a community isn't suffering? What are you going to do? Um, I told my councilman yesterday, I was at the Winston-Salem City Council, because they have the power to pass a resolution supporting HB 904 to pressure the Forsyth County representatives. And I asked them, and the same I ask of you, what are you going to do? Um, I am hungry, I said to them. Not for food. I'm hungry for change, and I'm hungry for justice. So what are you guys going to do? Are you going to help educate my community's minds and feed our souls? Or are you going to watch our dreams starve to death? So that is all I have for you today. Um, I now move it on to Esther. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know.